Creating a fully accessible site is incredibly difficult. I have a full crash course I'll link at the end of this video for you, but one thing that you probably have heard of is that using pixels for font sizes is a bad practice. And yes, that is true, but you may not realize why that is, I'll explain that in this video, but you may also not realize that using pixels for things like media queries, container queries, padding, and even sometimes margin is actually also a bad practice. In this video, I'm gonna show you why that can potentially be a bad practice, what you can do instead, and talk about all the different things to consider when it comes to using pixels for different elements on your page. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the entire idea for this video came from a video by Coder Coder where she kind of goes over this exact same concept. I'll leave a link for this in the description down below and I'll put a link in the cards for you as well if you want to check out her video. It's a really good explanation of pixels versus RAM and when to use one, when to use the other, and the problems with using pixels for lots of different things. But in this video, I kind of want to expand upon what she did in that video as well as rehash some of the other concepts that she covered in her video. So a really quick example so we can showcase the difference between pixels and rems is I have this really simple bit of code here. I have a font that is set to 32 pixels, one set to two REM, one set to 16 pixels, and one set to one REM. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the REM unit, essentially it is a root font size unit. So whatever the root font size, essentially the font size in your HTML element of your page, whatever that is set to is going to be one REM. And by default in most browsers, that is going to be 16 pixels. So one REM is equal to 16 pixels by default. But inside of the browser, you have the ability to change your font size. For example, right here inside of Chrome, I can change my font size from very small, small, medium, large, and very large. Every browser lets you change the font size, and this changes the root font size. So if I change this to very small, you can now see that things that are defined using rems actually get smaller because my root font size on my HTML element is using that whatever very small size is, and now it's converting that to two REM and one REM. It looks like it's probably set to about eight pixels. Same thing is true if I set this to very large. You can now see my rem units are much larger than my pixel units, even though by default in the normal default recommended medium size that most browsers ship with, they are the same size as soon as I as a user change my browser's font size, it's going to modify the rem values, but not modify the pixel values. Now this is very important because if I'm viewing a site, I obviously want to be able to change the font size to whatever I want. Of course, I can use zooming to zoom in and out to make my font larger and smaller, but if I'm changing the font size inside my settings, I want this to be reflected on the page. And if I'm using pixels as a web developer to define my font sizes, they do not change. No matter what you do, they will not change based on what the user defines inside their settings. Now this was something that I knew and also didn't know at the same time. I knew that this was a problem that you shouldn't use pixels for font sizes, but I also heard a lot of people say that this was a problem of the past and not something that you need to worry about anymore. And I used to kind of think that was true. I never really did any testing on my own. I always used REM units or EM units with either one just because that's what felt the most comfortable for me for using font sizes. But I always just kind of thought this pixel problem was something we didn't need to worry about. But that's the furthest thing pretty much from the truth that you can come up with. This pixel problem still exists because obviously the browser doesn't know how to convert 32 pixels to this very large font size. It doesn't know how to do that conversion, which is why we need these rem units. And again, the rem unit is just based on that root font size. And we can actually set our own root font size inside of our project. So I'm gonna change this back to medium real quick. I'm just gonna minimize it down. And I'm gonna look at our code that we have right here for essentially the exact same project. You can see here, I'm just setting the font size of all these different elements. And if I wanna set my own root font size, I can just come in here and say HTML and I can set my font size and this will set my root font size. For example, I can change it to 24 pixels and now you can see my rem units have increased in size because my root font size has changed and that's what that REM unit is based on. But if I go ahead into the settings of my Chrome and now I try to change this font size value to, for example, very small, or very large, you'll notice nothing actually changes on the right side of my screen. And that's because I, as a web developer, has changed the root font size on my page by defining my HTML font size to whatever it was, 24 pixels, and that is overriding whatever font size my user is setting inside of their browser. So you wanna make sure that you do not actually set a root font size on your page, because that's kinda of gonna override exactly whatever the user defines here, which is generally not ideal. Now that pretty much covers the difference between pixels and REMs for font size, but why exactly would you want to use something besides pixels for other things like media queries and the size of your elements and so on. Well, let's really quickly take a look at example of a button because that's a very simple use case to look at before we dive into something more complex. I'm gonna add in some basic styles for the button. I'll go over what they are in just a second and we'll come in here and we'll add a button and we'll give it the class of button. 
and just the text of button. So we can see I have a button. When I hover over it, it gets slightly darker. It's relatively straightforward. It's got some padding and so on. If we look at our styles, you can see the background's light blue. I have some five pixel padding, five pixel border radius. I have no border and I change the cursor to pointer. And then I'm just making the background color slightly darker. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this color mix function, I just released a crash course on everything related to color, including this color mix function. I'll link in the cards and description for you. But essentially, what if we want to change the size of our button based on the user's actual input, they change their font size to be larger or smaller. So let's say they come in here and they change their font size to be very large. You'll now notice our font size on our button has increased and that's because we haven't done anything to modify the font on our button. And we can even come in here and just say like font size is going to be one REM. So it's going to inherit the font size from the browser, but we don't even need to put that in there if we don't want to. It'll just use the default font size in the browser. We'll leave it in there to be explicit though. As you can see, when I increase the size of my font, the text increases. If I come over here, I can decrease the size of my font and you can see the text decreases. But you'll notice that the padding and the border radius of my button does not change. You can see here, the button has a lot of padding or at least it looks like a lot of padding because the text is so small. While my button is very large, you can see it looks very cramped, like the padding is very, very small. This is because the padding is set in pixels, so it's not scaling with the size of the text of my button. This is why generally when I create buttons, not always, but generally, I define my padding using EM values. So I can come in here and say like 0.1 EM, and here I could say something like 0.1 EM. It's gonna have to be a little larger. We'll say 0.2 EM, see if that looks relatively good. We'll make it a little bit larger. Maybe we'll do 0.3 EM. There we go. Now you can see when I have this larger font size, I have more padding and more border radius on my button. If I were to come in here and I were to de decrease my font size to very small, you can see it decreases the padding and decreases the border radius of my button. And again, that's because I'm using these EM values instead of pixel values. Now, the reason I use EM instead of REM generally with things like buttons and inputs is because if I change the actual size of my button font, for example, to two REM, I want to make sure that my padding and border radius scale with the current size of my button. If I were to set these to REM instead, so for example, here, this is an REM, you'll notice that my button now gets essentially shrunk down. It looks like it's shrunk down. So no matter what my font size is here, you can see it's maintaining the exact same padding and border radius. So using EM here just allows me to make sure my padding and border radius scale, even if the size of my button increases or decreases. Now, I really like doing this because it makes my button proportional. It doesn't matter how large my button is or how small my button is, it's proportional across all these different sizes. Now you may want to change things because as your button gets really, really large, for example, you may not want this massive amount of padding and border radius. So you may need to do things stylistically to make your button at certain sizes actually get smaller. So less padding, less border radius. But generally when you're just doing very small changes to your font size, which is what the browser is going to do. For example, these changes are not super drastic. This will just help make sure things scale up for your user because if they want a larger font size, they probably want a larger padding around the button to make it easier to see. And so that your actual site conforms to what you wanted it to look like when you created it originally. Because if you had those smaller values for your actual padding and your border radius by using pixels, it didn't scale up to the user's font size. It may not look like you actually want it to. Now to discuss the next example, I wanna move on to a separate project. And this project is actually from my CSS Simplified course. I'll link it in the cards and description if you actually want to check out this course. But in this particular project, I have everything set to pixels so we can see the difference between using pixels and REM. So I'm gonna open up what that project looks like right here, zoom it out to a normal zoom level, and we're gonna change our font size here to the normal medium font size so we can see what this project should look like with a standard font size. As you can see, we have these house cards and you can see on this sidebar section, we have a certain size you know, card. And then over here, we have a different size card. And we can see we have five rows of text showing up in all of our different cards. And if we look at our actual CSS, it's quite a large file with lots of complicated CSS. But the main thing for us to understand, this is essentially broken down into two separate sections. You can see we have a grid here with one FR on the left and 300 pixels on the right. And we also have a bunch of different queries towards the bottom, things like container queries and media queries. And you'll notice all of these are using pixels. So every single thing is being set based on pixels, but that is generally not ideal deal when we have a lot of text-based content. Because in our case, if we change our font size, for example, I change it to very large, you'll now notice my site is kind of unusable. I get like maybe five words of text that is actually legible inside of each one of these, and then everything else just overflows. It's just really not what we want. So instead of using pixels for all of our different sizing, for example, how tall our card is, how wide all of our different sidebars are, and all of that, we should probably be using REMs instead. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna modify how my grid is laid out. So we'll scroll all the way up to our grid, because you can see that's defined using pixels. Pixels, that makes our row only 200 pixels tall, when in reality, we want this to scale with our 
font size because the larger our font size gets, the more room we need for this to actually show up. So one kind of annoying thing about REMs is that they're based on a 16 pixel font size by default. So that's kind of the font size you're gonna base everything around since that's what most users will be using your site at. But 16 pixels is kind of a difficult number to divide by. So I recommend just pulling up a calculator and using that for your division. So we'll just convert this, which is 12.5 REM. That's the exact same as 200 pixels when you have a 16 pixel font. Now we're gonna do the same thing for 250 pixels. That converts to 15.625 REM. And now if we give it a save, you'll immediately notice certain things have changed. It still doesn't look super great because a lot of our other queries, for example, down here are based on pixels. But if we increase the size of our screen a little bit, you can now see we're at least fitting much more text on our screen. You can see we're now still getting our five lines of text and this is scaling up great. And if I were to come and when I change my font size to, for example, medium, you can see everything else still scales down properly. And if I go down to very small, you can see it actually scales things down again to work with that smaller size. So it kind of is proportional to what I want my font size to look like. Now we'll bump it back to very large so we can finish off the rest of our pixel related stuff. You'll notice certain things like box shadow. I don't need this to scale with the actual font size. Pixels are fine for that. It's fine for lots of things. But in general, when you have a lot of text inside of something or around something, you probably want to use REMs for that. So we'll scroll all the way down to the very bottom where we have all of our different container queries because these should probably also scale off of pixel size, or I'm sorry, off of REM sizes. So 450 pixels, we should convert that to REM. And if we do that, we're gonna get 28.125 REM. We get a quick save. It's not really gonna change much because we still have pixel values down here. And these pixel values should be 12.5 REM. We've already essentially done this once before. So I'm gonna copy that over just like that. So now we have this modified and you'll notice that changes what happens on the right hand side. Or if I shrink down my page, you can see what happens to my cards here. Essentially, it's making sure that my rows are going to be instead of 200 pixels tall, they're going to be 12.5 REM tall, which gives me extra room for all of my different text related content. I could even make it so that my image doesn't actually need to scale because this can stay small no matter what my font size is. Right now, since that's the first row, if I change my font size to small, it shrinks my image down. And if I change it to like medium, it's shrinking my image down and large is making my image larger. I don't really need that. So this one I could set to 200 pixels. That's going to be fine. My image will stay the same size, but the content section that has my text is what's going to scale. So again, if I were to change this to very small, and I make sure, let's go to medium here, make this a little bit smaller so you can see it stacks. And when I go to very large, you can see my image stays the same size, but the content for my text is actually scaling up and down in size. So that looks really good. We can now finish this off essentially by doing the rest of these. We have 650 pixels here. That's going to be set to 40, 0.625 REM. And then lastly, 400 pixels is 25 REM. And this right here is now making sure everything is going to stack vertically when our screen size gets smaller. And as we scroll around, this isn't a perfect looking site by any means. I haven't done any other adjustments, but you can see just by changing my media queries and the sizes of the containers that hold my text, this is actually a fully responsive, decent looking site across all different screen sizes, no matter what my font size is set to in my browser, whether it's very large or very small, it's still going to scale responsively across all these different screen sizes and look good enough. Now let's bring our text back to the medium size and I kind of want to just talk about how working with REMs inside of your code base can be a bit of a pain, but how we can get around that a little bit. So you may notice that doing the conversion from pixels to REM is kind of a huge pain. And when I first look at the value 28.125 REM, I don't know what that mentally means. Like I don't have an easy way for me to convert 28.125 REM to pixels. But for the most part, it doesn't really matter what that is as a pixel value. All that matters is that when my screen size gets to this point or my container in this particular point gets to this size, that's all I care about is to change it. So one thing that you can really easily do to make this work is instead of constantly working with pixel values, because when you're working with a site like this and you're like, okay, I wanna make this responsive at this particular point is where I want the breakpoint to be. I don't know what size this is on my screen. I don't know how large my container is right here. I can just play around with some values. I can say, okay, you know what? Maybe that's around 10 REM. Nope, that's too small. Let's try 20. Nope, that's too small. Let's try 25. Nope, still not quite there. And I just play around until I get to a particular value, maybe like 28, which looks relatively good for what I want. I do the same thing with pixels. I'm like, okay, you know what? 300 is a little bit small. 400 is a little small. Oh, 500, that looks great. Let's do that. So it's the same thing with REM. So that's not really a huge deal breaker in my opinion. When you're dealing with these large REM values for container queries or media queries, you just kind of plug in numbers until you get something that works relatively good. And as you start to use these REM values more, it starts to become easier for you to be like, okay, I know generally what 28 REM looks like or 30 REM. Because generally you kind of have an idea, okay, this is like 500 pixels wide, give or take a little bit. You can kind of get to that point with REM just by using them quite a few times. Also, another thing with REM that is kind of nice is when you're working with smaller REM values for like an REM of like one or two, generally that math is really easy. Oh, 16 times two, that's 32. Especially as programmers, we're very conscious 
just of the powers of two, and 16 is one of those powers of two, so it's relatively easy for us to do those simple conversions for like one, two, three, four, five REM. Once it starts to get beyond five REM, that's when it becomes a little bit more cumbersome to do in your head, but that's where you know the plug and play kind of trial error technique works really well. Now, one thing that's a really big positive to REM, or AEMs in my opinion, is it makes it much easier to make a granular design system. With pixels, writing something like 15 pixels makes a lot of sense. Writing something like 20 pixels makes a lot of sense. Even something like 18 pixels makes a lot of sense. And that's because they're all whole numbers. It's relatively free form. You can kind of write whatever you want and it generally feels like it's a good number that fits within your system. But when you're working with REMs instead of pixels, it now becomes much more tricky to actually just throw in any random number you want and have it feel good. For example, I would just come in here and have like 1.56 that does not feel like a good number for my padding value to be. Maybe it should be 1.5 or maybe 1.6 or maybe 1.75, some kind of easy multiple. So this allows you to create a design system where you say, okay, you know what? Every single value that is defined using REMs must be at a multiple of 0.125. So it could be like 0 0.125, 0 0.25, 0 0.375. It just must be essentially an eighth. An eighth of an REM is the smallest that I can modify things. So this gives you a really good design system. So instead of having a bunch of random like 15 pixels, 17 pixels, 16 pixels, you have, okay, this is going to be one REM. This is going to be 1.125 REM. This is going to be 0.875 REM and so on. This makes your site appear much more consistent because now you have equal space in between everything instead of having 15 pixels of spacing here, 16 there, 17 there, and so on. Now, one kind of final thing that people try to do with REM values to make it easier to work with is they'll go all the way up to wherever their HTML is defined at and they'll set their font size to 62.5%. And essentially what that does is it converts 16 pixels to 10 pixels. So now my font size here is 62.5% of whatever I set in my browser. And since this is a percentage based size, it will scale up my browser. For example, as I change my browser sizing, you can see everything changes. But of course now I've set a baseline of 10 pixels. So what I can do now inside my body is I can set my font size to, for example, be like 1.6. REM, and now that's going to set everything to be 16 pixels by default, which is great. But now every time I use an REM, one REM is equivalent to 10 pixels. So it's much easier for me to do math. For example, 200 pixels would just be 20 REM in this particular scenario. This may seem like a great solution, but it has some other downsides to it. For one, you notice my site still doesn't quite look right. And that's because I have a lot of places where I'm using REMs. Now I would need to convert these REMs to make sure that they're working like this would be 1.6 REM to convert it to the new value where our base pixels is 10. But the other problem is, is if you have other code on your site that's coming from other places. For example, you're using Shad CN as your UI library and it has font sizes being set for particular things. Well, you need to go ahead and change the font size for all those different things. Maybe you're using Bootstrap and it's using REMs for its font sizes. Well, now all those font sizes are going to be messed up because your font size is changing what the root font size is expected to be. So everything else that you're using on your site, third party libraries, UI libraries, other code, doesn't matter what it is. If you're pulling in other code onto your site that uses REMs, it's going to look broken because you have modified what that base REM value is to something it does not expect. So it'll look really weird compared to the rest of your content since essentially it's going to be 62.5% of the size that it should be. This is why I pretty much recommend never doing this and just sticking with your root font size being 16 pixels and just trying to work around that. It becomes easy at these small sizes like I mentioned and when you get to those larger sizes, you just start to get used to it. Because let's be honest, when you first started learning web development, did 300 pixels mean anything to you? Probably not. So if you can learn, hey, I know what generally what 300 pixels looks like, and it took you maybe a couple months of working with CSS to do that, you're probably going to get to that same point with REM. In a couple months, you'll be like, oh, I know exactly what 20 REM looks like. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I would have an accessibility crash course linked for you. It's going to be right over there. And if you want to check out a full CSS course that teaches you everything you need to know about CSS from the absolute basics all the way up to really important concepts like this, you're going to want to check out my CSS simplified course. I just released it. It's fully up to date with the most modern CSS possible. It'll be linked down in the description below. I highly recommend you check that out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.